We are joined now once again by a man I do not bet against in football or life. A man who is pulling off the greatest turnaround in college football history. A man who, with the help of his best in the nation staff, just might be pulling off the greatest coaching job in college history. Deion Sanders now has Colorado at a dominant 2 and O. Oh. Welcome, Coach Prime, and thank you. 2 and O. Oh. Thank you. Skip, you're looking good, baby. I love that blazer, Woo. man. Woo. I love it. I, I told him that time when he came in. I you're said, looking oh, good. You're doing something right there. You're stepping something up. Something right. Yeah. He really is. And yeah. speaking of looking great, time. Talk to me just about seeing that opener in Colorado. You and I, Dion, we played in many big games. We ran yeah. out in many big stadiums. Compare what you saw in that opener, because it was incredible. I'll dial it back a little bit, Mike. I, I, I stayed the night here, the night before. I, I slept in my office because I wanted to get up and see the transformation. I wanted to see empty mm -hmm. to full and just see it, how it just all came together. And then all you guys on the sideline and support and the, the thousands of fans. I had a couple of pregame shows to go do, so I got to ride the cart on around campus. And, oh, my God, campus was electric. I, 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 that was the first. I've never seen it that way. So that was new to me, and it was, it was so welcoming. And it was, it was, it was a beautiful thing. Mm. So, Dion, I got to ask. What exactly, what message was Coach Rule trying to send when he gathered his entire Nebraska team out at midfield on your Buffalo logo before the football game started? I didn't hear about that until I saw it on Shador's presser. I didn't, uh, I didn't know all uh, that transpired. I had no idea. All I know is during the game after Shador made, Mike, you remember he made that like Heisman-type scramble and threw the extra point right. in. And he took off his helmet and he was strutting. And I said, come here, boy, come here, come here. And I turned into dad for a minute. I said, son, you cannot do that. You cannot take off your helmet. He said, dad, it's personal. It's personal. Ooh. It's personal. And let me bring and he this ran off. He said, dad, it's personal. And he ran off. Like, it was really authentic. He was really, I didn't know none of that transpired uh. early before the game. I had no idea. In and, and, and time, let me bring the audience in because it's interesting when you say what you said, it, what, what Shador said. I was in there. I was in the locker room and during the pregame speech, during when you came out and everybody's in the locker room and you started talking to the team. The first thing you said, this is our house. It's personal. It's personal. Right. So you re him repeating that in that moment on the right. field, you're, it, it is all of your messaging gets to these kids and they take it at the highest level. Yeah. They, I yeah, mean, they do. They, they talk, talk to me about what that is. For you, Tom, I'd watch you go in the kids' home and get kids and bring them to your home when we were playing together and you're trying yeah. to help those kids. Talk to me when you see that kind of thing, your messaging resonating and oh. regurgitated at that moment by that player. I think one of the greatest gifts that uh, God has blessed me with is the the, I said no ability to be able to recant the recruiting trip, recant the mother, recant the father, recant the sibling, that recant, recant something that transpired that brought us together. So that that small commonality, Dylan Edwards played for me when he was four to six years old. So I could just look at him and say something like, you know how we started this. You know how we going to end this. It's with truth. And it's, it's, it's easy. I could look at smoke, you know, Kabasi smoke and say, now, you know, mama trying to get out the hood now. Let's go, baby. Mm -hmm. uh, I need sure. you to come on because we're going to rescue mama. That's what we're going to do. And that that registers because it's those little intricate things about these young men that I love and that comprises them. Jimmy Horn, the pop is incarcerated right now. And I just talked to pop getting on the plane after the, the, the TCU game. Um, and it was a beautiful moment that pop trusted us with his son. Although he's incarcerated, he said, I, I want my son be up, be up, to be up under your guidance and those little things. He said, you told me you was going to have his back and you took care of him. So seeing Jimmy Horn limping on the sideline, I said, all right, now, you know, Pop, don't play that. And he jumped right up. He said, I'm ready, Coach. I'm good. I just caught a little cramp. I'm straight. So those little details, Skip, and, and yeah. Playmaker, that, that's, that's what gets mm. us to the next level. Mm. So, Dion, speaking of the next level, you have vaulted to 18th in the country. You still have six games left 
against Pac-12 teams now ranked in the top 25, and you already beat a top 25 team, obviously, at TCU. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of coaches in college football who would look at six more games against top 25 and say, oh, no. And I'm guessing you're thinking, oh, yeah, I love this. We want it. You want, we want it. it. I mean, that, that's what we signed up for. We want the smoke. We want the fire. We we want we 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 want the dogs. Like we we want it because we have not yet played our best ball, and uh, we're, we're obviously two and zero. Oh, but we have not yet played our best. Your first game, the defense didn't didn't quite show up. Now, in the second game, the offense was dismal in the first half. But when we put it all together, offense, defense, as well as special teams, it's going to be something to behold, and someone's going to have to catch that fire. They're going to have to catch that heat. But I promise you, these young men that's inside this locker room, as well as coaching staff, we want it. Mm. Yeah, you have games every week. And you continue to play like this. And what I said and talked to some of the guys about, the greatest example of a championship team is a team that meets and beat all challenges. And you guys have had different challenges. TCU hey. kept coming back scoring, but you didn't give in. You kept coming back scoring. Nebraska came in with an intent to say, you guys are not who everybody thinks you they are, did. and I'm going to show you. That <laughs> was did. a different challenge. Those right, guys right. had to withstand that and then, then impose their will. I mean, what are you most proud of when you see a team take those different challenges and handle them that like they do? The resiliency. I'm, I'm proud of the resiliency. I'm proud of the depth and the understanding of the time that we have, like these kids understand, hey, it ain't no day off, man. It ain't, ain't no day off. The whole world is watching you. Everything's on. It, it, it don't just start on Saturday. It starts on Sunday. We practiced yesterday. That's where it started. Now they have the day off and half the team is going to be in there watching film and getting prepared and studying up. So when we present the Sky Report tomorrow, they're going to already have a, a, a tail on, on the, who they're playing against in uh, the job at hand. So I love the thought process that they have right now. We're probably at about 80 percent in the locker room that truly believes about 80 percent we still got 20 20 more percent to to have a, a all-inclusive thought process that we all believe and a knowledge that we're gonna go out there and do what we we're gifted to do and we, what we can do mm. will you win over the 20 percent sooner than later uh yeah it, it better be sooner because <laughs> we're getting ready to hit a road you're about that, to uh, Ready. Yeah, we're playing against some pretty good teams, and we yeah. can't make the little mistakes that we've been making. Yeah, by the way, did you get to watch any of Oregon at Texas Tech late? Oh, on of Saturday course. Night? Of yeah. course I did. You know and, I did. Yeah, what, that's a good game. What, a great did game. You, what did you see from your two weeks away opponent, Oregon? Uh, well, I, I can't even tell you I'm looking that far. I, I just – I love the way Joey uh, – because Joey is a great guy, a friend of mine, you yeah. know, coached it. In uh, Texas, now he's the head coach of Texas Tech. Just the way he responded after dropping the first game, I mean, he fought to the end. Um, Oregon have a good team. Everybody in this darn conference, man. You got they're, they're well yeah. coached. They have athletes. They're, they're physical up front. And uh, I feel as though when the time has come, we're going to match. We're going to mm -hmm. match that level of intensity. But it's going to be a whole new thing, especially going on the road again. John, in these next couple of weeks, you get a win. There's going to be conversations about National champion possibility, national championships possibility. What are your thoughts or what are you going to tell your young men about those um, words when they start it's, hearing? It's way too premature for that. We, yeah. we, we one day at a time, not one game at a time. We one day at a time. We really trying to just stack up great practices. Mm. Mac, you know, I know the way you practice. I was practicing against you, man. You practice like an animal, like a dog, mm -hmm. like a like a darn star. So when mm -hmm. it, it, it came to fruition on Sunday, that's what we had already seen and expected. So mm -hmm. that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to create the expectation of practice. The guys that ball out in practice, those are the same guys that ball out in the game for us. So we're just trying to get more guys on that page. Mike, when you were here, you saw those receivers. That's what they do in practice. You, you saw the way Shador throws the football. That's what he does, does at practice. So we're just trying to get more guys on that page to practice with purpose and practice like it's a game. So when it's a game, it resembles practice. Mm -hmm. So speaking of your son, you being the greatest cornerback ever by far, tell us what you see in your son as a quarterback at this stage of his growth. Oh, that's a great question, Skip. He's, he's a bona fide leader. He's uh, very calm, very patient in the pocket. He, he studies so darn much that – it's not, it's not too many things that you could trick him in. Like, you yeah. can't trick him in coverage or anything like that. He gets upset. You know, we 
a break off a route one yard too too shallow or we're not running our routes at the depth and the speed that they need to run them. And that, those are the kind of things that frustrate him. With the protection isn't correct. But it's hard to fool him at this age and stage in his career because he started every game since he was a freshman and he started every game in high school. So some college quarterbacks, although they may be starting college, they probably sat for a year and didn't even start their whole high school career. This guy has started every football game in high school and every game in college. That's a lot of football. That's a lot of repetitions. And he does not take plays off, especially in practice. So he prepares like that. And what he sees is is unbelievable. I, I love his vision and his, his thirst for the game. He wants to be great. He really does. He, he really does, Tom. It's so funny because I got to sit with him on the bench one uh, in that game. And, and he came over and he was saying, he said, I, see, I said, what you see? He's like, yeah. he, he was frustrated with some right, of the coverages because right. they were running a three and three. He said, they're stacking it three and three, putting three behind coming. He said, I, I just got to be a little more patient. Mm -hmm. And then he went out there and just started carving them up. You know what I mean? Because right, right. he's coming over. I was trying, I, I, you know, I said to him on the sideline, I said, hey, just remember those three words. Don't be satisfied. Mm. He said, I got it. Then went out and started carving them up, man. It was just such a moment. Because I time, I was thinking about the little kid that I done saw all the time. Right, right. Right. I was right. like, when did he become right. this that he's breaking right. down defenses for me right. like that? Right. So I can only imagine what you go through in moments mm. where you're... Where you're you got to understand on his perspective, he, he, he's, he's warming up in between commercials and T.O.'s catching the ball. Then he's coming to the bench and you giving him love and, and talking to him about the game. Do you understand that what that does for a college kid, man? He got two Hall of Famers sitting over there and everybody else... But Skip, this is the funny thing somebody just said because they all got an opinion. Somebody in, in, in the complex, they say, you know, by the time we get ready to play Key, Keyshawn's uh, 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 Trojans, yes, he right. said it's going to look like the BET Awards. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Keyshawn's getting a good laugh out of that here on the floor. It's going to look yeah. like the BET Awards on the sideline yeah. by that time. Yeah. Yeah. Trust me. <laughs> All right, good. so Dion, back to some right, reality. Funny, Any right. fear on your part that Colorado State, ahead of all these marquee showdowns, could be a proverbial trap game? Uh, we don't play traps. We, we, we don't play trap. It's going to be trapping in practice if you don't do your job. You won't have a <laughs> opportunity to get out there and get trapped. <laughs> like, like we, we practice with purpose, and you know, we, we have too much of a mature staff to allow something uh, as ignorant as that to happen because, you know, we're slowly but surely, and these kids love the attention, they love the focus, they love the notoriety, but they understand that comes with work mm. and that comes with performing. So all that can uh, evaporate instantaneously if you don't yeah. do your job. Yeah. yeah. One, one, one last question, Tom. How, how do you handle a, a, a Travis Hunter? I know no one knows as much information about yeah. his situation than you do. Because I was watching him, I was like, I know he wants to continue to have those 11 receptions, 130-yard yeah. games. And if he, How do you say, all right, now, they, they, when they start to give you that kind of attention? Because you did a great thing. I saw one time when you guys used him as a decoy. People don't see those right. things. When you just right. swung him out, that corner stayed, and, he, and Shador hit right behind him for a touchdown. You know what I mean? But still, he wants to make those plays. He, he how do you handle it all? I mean, it's a great question. Travis is the ultimate team player. He's the ultimate competitor. So the thing about that, when he's not getting the ball um, on offense, he still has a tremendous responsibility on defense. And you got to understand, we could take Travis from the outside and put him inside, and that changes the whole defense. They have to make adjustments for Travis because you got to deal with him. Mm. But he is so uh, good, and he is so versatile that it's hard to just contain him for a whole game. The problem is we can't miss him. When he's open, we we can't miss him when he's free and when he separates. We we cannot miss him. We got to take advantage of those opportunities because most teams are going to double him or they're going to send somebody to just shadow him tremendously. But he's a when he's not balling out on offense. Do not negate what he's contributing on defense because he's playing shutdown on the other side as well. Mm. Right. Dion, we love you, man. Yeah, we, we appreciate do, you. We, appreciate we thank you, you, and we look forward to speaking to you again here soon on Undisputed. I love you, playmaker. Keep on doing your thing, baby. Hey, hey love let me you. just say that. Let me say this. Time, I knew when I when we were there, I said, this is definitely God. That first field goal they kicked, the goal posts were like this. And then those flags started waving. I have never <laughs> seen the flag knock the ball down so you can't go through there. That flag on your goal post knocked that ball back so it, they didn't get that field goal. I yeah. said, this thing going to be crazy.
We got to keep doing this time. This is the good you. luck. This is the good family. Y'all know that. Y'all we're going to be here man. every Monday <laughs> when we win. We're going to keep doing it. All right, buddy. Thank you. I got you. I got you. I got All right. You. Thank <laughs> you, Dion. Thank you. Sanders.